Hello, it's Sandy again from SpectrumRoyal.com. Today we're going to be having a quick run around um, of other ways to use our Spectrum Noir markers. Um, rather than doing a complete full image, there's actually lots of fun, quick things you can do um, with your markers to add a bit of touch of colour to your cards. Um, so a couple of the things we'll be working through, I've got five sort of preps but we'll see how far we get. Um, is we're looking to do something very similar to this ombre effect on this cast layout or something as simple as um, the ombre effect on an embellishment. So if we just look at those two to start with then we'll get our scrap paper. Scrap paper is really important because it helps to absorb the um, ink coming through because we actually want it to come through. We want to saturate the card stock so that it gives us a nice colour blend. Um, so all my images have been printed out onto um, Nina cardstock from Crafters Companion, which is 160 GSM. Um, and the black card I'm using is Crafters Companion Matte Black, my personal favourite. And the white heavy cardstock I'm using will be Sheena's Stamping Card. Okay, so to recreate the, 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 this ombre effect, um, any stamp, um, this one happens to be a digi image, um, and put just we just put a black box around it, or you just could just cut it so that um, it was in the size that you wanted. We're going to be working with um, IB3, IB2, and IB1, and then um, BG3, BG2 and BG1. So we're going to make the ombre effect coming from top and bottom using these three blends. And the great thing about using this sort of technique is that it's dead dead quick um, to achieve. So we're not worrying about the edges because we're going to chop it. So we're going to lay our dark colour down first then that's BG, um, IB3. Then we're going to go to IB2 no real problems with, and we're just going to slightly overlay that colour from the first one, and we only want to go to the middle, so we're going to stop about there with the second colour, and again using the chisel tip, nice and quick, is the IB1, and we're going to do circular motions, it's quite a jump from IB2 to IB1, so we're going to do circular motions to blend that colour in. Some of the colour ways you'll find more of a jump and then back over with the IB1 and then that will start to soak through. And then you'll see that we've got a nice saturation through the card and we want to see that when we're blending. Um, and now we're going to go to our other colours. We're going to turn, in, turn the image round and we're going to start with the BG3 which is the brown greys and again we're going to start with our darkest so BG3 laying a nice layer of colour down and then we've got BG2 and again a nice layer of colour slightly overlaying and then BG1 which is the lightest and again just slightly overlaying the layer before and we're going to bring that down. Didn't bring the other one up far enough, but that's not a problem. And then back over the top with the IB1. <coughs> so if you don't, I haven't quite met in the middle, and again, if you look at the back, nice colourway. So we're going to go to the IB1 and just bring this one up a bit because she can have a bit more light than dark and then slightly lay over the top so that you're then blending those two together and because they're both ones from the colour range so this is the colour family and this is the depth of colour um, so this one being BG1 will have the same depth of colour as IB1 so then you're not trying to blend a really light one into a really really dark one which is what we don't want so and just blend that over a little bit more because as I said there is quite a jump so I'm just laying another layer of IB1 down across where those two go and there you go 
that's that first ombre image. Once that's dry, the colour will settle once that's dry um, because there is so much ink on that one. And this is what it looks like when it's matted up. So we've matted it onto the black card white layer. It's an A6 card base, um, my favourite. Um, with a bit of ribbon, a little bit of an embellishment, and there's your card done. So that's the first technique um, with your ombre. Um, the second one we're going to look at is using up some of our embellishments. Now, great, it's a great way to use up scraps, um, scraps of card um, that are in your box because um, we all end up with a ton of scraps. Um, that we don't quite know what we're going to do with. Um, so um, I've cut out, um, when I have time, I, I, I try to cut out um, die cuts using the white card that I have left over um, because you can change the colour and that's the, the, the great thing with your Spectrum Noir. So um, with these ivies that are from the um, Christmas Classics range with Dizaya, um, we're going to use the LG range, so we're going to start with our darkest, and it's LG4. And again, we're just we're just going to start with our chisel, with our chisel tips, and we're just going to put a, a line across the bottom because I want to put mine on diagonally, so it's going to sit on my card like that. So I'm going to have my dark line coming across like that. Um, I'll leave the lids off for a second. Um, and then uh, LG3, LG3, which is the next one down. Again, so you can see from the, the numbers that we're working our way back down from the darkest to the lightest. And then LG2 is our next one. And we're just going to again slightly overlay that colour. So you can already see that we've gone from the dark and we're coming up now to the light and then we've got LG1 which is the lightest um, and the LGs are my go-to greens I've got to say. They, um, they really are my favourites. So I'm going to put quite a bit of the LG1 in the middle um, and then I'm going to turn it around and on the same sort of angle as I did the first one, we're going to go back to our LG4. This is where I'll pick up the wrong one. I'm going to get our piece along. And because of where the camera is, I'm trying to get my angle right. So we're going to do our LG1. And we're going to do our LG4, sorry, down there as well. Then we're going to get our LG3. And we're going to put our next layer on. I hope you can see this all right. It's a bit difficult when you're trying to get the light right and let you see what I'm doing close up. So there's our LG3 and our LG1, uh, 2 rather. Let's see, how many times do I keep getting the names wrong? Right, there you go. So, and then at, come to meet our LG1 that we've already got down in the centre. So that will come to meet just a little piece over the top to blend in our second coat of LG3 and back with our LG1 which is the LG1 just to sharpen up that centre and there you go that one's all graduated so we'll do exactly the same on our little one but I'm going to leave out um, LG4 the darkest one and I'm just going to use LG3 she says chucking it around the room. I'm just going to use LG3 because this one's only a baby one. LG3 had to be the wrong one. LG2 fading away to LG1. And again, you slightly layer over the top when you're mixing those two colours together because you want them to blend in together. So we're going to go back to our LG3 and lay a second coat down. And then we're going to go back to LG2, which is always the one I don't pick up. And you can see again that it's this just slightly overlapping 
so that I can blend the three into the two. So LG2 over the top, there we go, and back to our LG1. Nice, quick, let me just turn this over so you get so nice, quick, easy, and hopefully if I just leave that there, you should be able to see that we're graduating from the LG3 up to the LG1, and on this one, we've got the four right the way through to the one in the middle and back out again following up the colours. Um, so and a quick, well because this card's so quick, I sort of wanted to prove that it was so quick. I'm just getting my lids on. Um, and there's the phone ringing somewhere in my, in my kitchen. So someone's going to grab it for me. And so we're going to quickly put this card together just to sort of prove how quick these, these cast cards can be. Um, clean and simple. Um, I've got a thing about corner punching um, at the moment, at odd angles, so um, I always do opposite angles. Um, so we've got our corners punched, um, and I'm, I only punch two because I'm a bit strange. Um, and then we're going to put a couple of mats. Now as I said, the great thing about these is that all of these white mats were off cuts from where I've done some of my, some of my bigger, more flamboyant cards um, and I've done a lot of a lot of layers um, and I'm literally just munching off the corners of these layers um, and all I'm trying to do is to layer up um, we won't do that one because I've just done that wrong there we go stop talking when you're doing it right Talking and doing is not the easiest thing in the world. Right, so now we've got we've got our base layer just here, and we're going to use our Colal glue. This is the multi, the um, all-purpose Colal glue, which you'll find on Crafters Companions website, um, and we're going to layer that on. And although this is white on white, it does add a little bit of depth. So we're going to carry on and we're going to layer that bit on. And left a little bit of a gap, but really I was working on the sizes of the bits, the off cuts of cards that I had. So it's really not very prescriptive um, and really lets you have a free reign on what's left in your box. Um, and the reason we've only munched the corners on opposite ends because it now gives us a, a really unique shape to our cards um, and from off cuts it's now become a, a real zingy make. So we're going to take our, our ombre green and we're going to use the Colal 3D glue and um, I've already put mine into the syringe just to make it easier to to handle and I'm going to put it on the leaves just to give him a little bit of height I have not put it in at the top so we're going to start in the rounded corner and take it take that one up there and then this one, what do we reckon? Where do we reckon? Coming off there? No, I don't like that. I think I liked it there. So just play around with them. Um, this, as I said, this is from the Christmas classics, but by no means is it, is it Christmas. The way that I've used it here, it's uh, certainly more of a springtime ivy than it is a Christmas ivy. But that would depend on how you, how you, the colour ways that you choose to um, to do yours. So there you go. I quite like it there. Bit of glue in the way. Right, there we go. And there's our first one. So our first one's done uh, with that ombre effect, using up our scraps. Um, and there was the original one, which I did in the BG. Um, colours and this one was in the LG colours that we've just done together. Um, so our next one 
that we're going to try and get done in is again using the same the same effects but this time we're going to use them on butterflies um, so I just pre-cut um, some butterfly die cuts um, and I seem to have lost one along the way there he is right okay so we're just going to have one or maybe two colours we'll see how I feel um, so I'm going to work with the CT range um, for the butterflies um, and so we're going to go with I'm going to start with CT3 I have got four but we'll see how how we feel um, so we're going to start you can't really see them very well at the moment but we'll start putting on our CT3 around the edge of our butterfly you can start to see him a bit more now he's off now with the white so you can start to to see and we'll do exactly the same with the other one just coming around in a semicircle with the butterfly so that you're catching the ends of of both his wings um, or her wings um, now CT2 so we've done CT3 so now we're going to take it to CT2 so we've got that second layer of colour going on um, and this is actually it's a great way to play with your spectrum was um, to test out new new blends you know every blend that you do won't necessarily work the way you want it to you it won't be quite right so you can actually punch yourself or, or die cut yourself a lot of little butterflies or circles one inch circle punch is great um, and then you can test out blends and then write stick them in a book right underneath what each one with what the colors were and then you'll be able to flick through when you're stuck for a color for a dress or for um, even hair blends so that you can see in your book the blends that you liked and the blends that you didn't and um, the same when you pick them up from um, from the website um, obviously um, the girls in the design team and I have come up with um, several types of, of blends there you see there, there we go so we've got that white in the center coming out to our dark and now I'm gonna I've got four more so each butterfly is gonna have three layers so I'm going to very quickly run through and get these colored up for you so we're going to do the ends this one's going to be the base layer so I want this one a bit darker so we're going to do coming in slightly further I'm only going to do the two colors on this one because this one's going to be my bottom butterfly and we'll move the lids off um, and we're going to do the CT2 coming into the middle and the CT2 coming into the middle. Now someone remind me that that's the bottom. She says talking to herself. Um, so and CT3 gets harder and harder to find a clean spot. There you go, a clean spot on my bits of paper. And CT3. See, you see just how quick that you can do these, especially when you're talking about things like butterflies, because they're not perfect. Butterflies in the wild have got all sorts of um, colours going running through. Um, now we're going to go to the CT2, just a nice piece of that going through. So it doesn't matter if you get it slightly off on a butterfly. And then CT1 is our, our last layer. And we want to come through and back there and we want to come through. Now if you have a look at what we've done, you should be able to see, on the ones that are drying, you should now be able to see that we've got this lovely ombre effect going on um, with our butterflies. So I'm going to leave them now. I'm going to leave them on the white paper to remind me that they're not the bottom one. Um, and we're going to... Um, Put together a really really simple design with them again I've got an A6 piece of card um, but it's this time I'm going to use it tenfold so it's going to stand up like that um, with a fold at the top um, and I've got a black mat to go on onto that 
um, and then I've got another piece of marker paper here this is the same so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and get my CT1 um, which had to be the, the only one I'd put a cap on um, and I'm going to take a little bit of CT1 across the top of this paper and then I'm going to get my blender pen and very gently using the bullet nib I'm just going to bring that colour out just so that there's no harsh line just going over it very slightly and as that dries um, it looks like there's a grey line there at the moment but that's because it's wet um, as you can see from the back um, that's actually just the, just the solution from the blender so we'll let that do its thing and we'll let that dry so we're going to put the lid back on my pens Right, right, they've got their lids on. Okay, so what we've got is, so we've got our base and we've got our fast drying piece with our yellow at the top. Um, it is still drying, so hopefully by the time I've put this together, it should have dried to a piece so that you can actually see just how gentle that CT1 is on the card. So um, when I do my mats I usually come down by um, a quarter of an inch um, or four or five millimetres um, because I don't like to have a massive big border um, around. So um, there, you'll start to see now that, that we've now got a, um, a slightly fading edge on that when the uh, and it is still drying but the um, blender solution is doing its job and fading that for us so we're going to use our color glue again because it gives me that little bit of wiggle room and we've got our just our little hint up the top now what I've done is I've got a, um, a square piece of card again they were off cuts um, using up all my scraps on these makes. Um, this, have, this is 7cm by 7cm um, and the black will be 7.5 by 7.5 so we're just going to put our collar glue on the back of the white piece of paper and we're going to, it is a scrap piece of um, the Nina cardstock because it colour it matches them um, and you can either use um, your 3D glue gel um, or stick it straight on but because 3D glue gel takes a bit of time to dry um, I'm just going to stick my um, square straight to the card and we take it up to where our red uh, to the sort of to the line of our um, sunshine there our yellow and now we can get to work on our butterflies so we've got our our lovely little butterfly that we've just done. So we're going to fold his wings at the edge of the body and we're going to take that over and the same the other side, just, you just need to put your finger on, your fingernail on and just gently bend that over. Don't bend too quickly, you're just sort of trying to ease the paper over to stretch the fibres um, and then if you hold on to his body again, just take your finger and gently roll the wing over and the same the other side, gently roll the wing over and you should have a little butterfly. So we're going to put him on there. We're going to do exactly the same with the other one. Again, we're easing over the paper, just ease it over to stretch the fibres rather than folding it. Um, and then we're just going to run that over our finger, and run that one over our finger, and there's the base to our second one. So I'm going to layer those up. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same to the rest of these butterflies. Stick them on and I'll be... Okay, right, we're back. So what I've done is um, I have stuck the butterflies on by layering them up, three for each butterfly, um, and I used the 3D glue gel in the centre, um, but you can use your preferred method. So we've now got the butterflies, and now what I'm using is the Easy Crystal um, this is stops all that fiddliness um, and again Crafters Companion website um, in getting our jewels on. So I've put three down the centre of each of the butterflies 
So now I'm just sort of creating a little butterfly trail just to give the car a little bit of bling. And there we go. Um, so there you go, nice and quick. Again, you can change the colours, mix it up a bit. You can make a note set, um, put your sentiment down here. Um, so, but I think a note, you know, a set of notelets would be ideal for this type of card. So there we go. So there's the third one, and I think we've probably got time to just very quickly use the same technique to show you another cool way that you can use your colour blends. Um, so we're going to use some of my favourite matte black card, um, Crafters Companion, and then all I've done is I've die cut out already um, a load of um, circle shapes. Um, you can do this with punches, I know that um, there's several makes of punches out there, and I've die cut some letters from um, the Desire, um one inch alphabet. So we're going to go in and I'm going to use my CT range again, make sure my circle's the right way up. And I'm going to do a smiley face, if you like, on my circle, just that bottom half. Um, and this is how you would um, create your own colour chart if you want to. And um, when you use slightly bigger circles, you can show your blends right through from the dark to your CT1, which is the lightest and always go back over your colours a second time because they will never show their true depth until you've gone over again. Layer, layer those colours up until you're happy with the depth of field that you've got. And there's our CT2 and again over with our CT1. Okay, so we've got our first colour blend nice and drying and what we're going to do is we're going to pop them on there um, and it won't be see through when it's dry. So we've done our yellow so I'm going to grab another circle and I'm going to go back to my LGs and I'm going to use LG3 mainly because it's the first one I grabbed and we're going to put a smiley face with our dark one. Nice layer of our LG3 and again these circles can't stress enough that you really need to have your own colour chart made up um, it's the only way that I, I can really see what my colours are when I'm trying to match them to a backing paper um, for, a, for a particular thing um, so and using circles is a really great way because you can clip them together um, um, with a little one, um, one of the book rings um, and there's your LG1 so we're going to go back down to LG3 I'd already layered quite a bit of LG3 on so LG2 I clearly didn't do as much work with because I was busy talking to you so there we go um, there's my LG2 and just blend the edge of that back out into my LG3 and now you'll see the difference now that my yellow is now dried um, so it's not showing any of that black through so we'll just wait for our LG to dry so that's our LG circle um, and then we haven't used this one yet so I think we'll do our this is BT3 so this is from the gorgeous blues range and I'm aware that I've been rabbiting on for quite some time and Taylor will be telling me off so I'm going to finish this one up and put the finish card on the website for you um, with the post. Um, when I post up the, the video, um, I'll have in the comments, um, in the description section, that's BT2. So I'm only working with the 1, 2s and 3s. So, and then BT1, which is the, the this set, this BT is... Um, along with the LGs, are my favourite go-to colours. I absolutely adore them. Um, and so we're going to go back with our BT3. And... Same again. This is... It's a little bit over. Get a nice layer of our BT2 down. It actually came a little bit further up. 
There we go, and you'll see the saturation coming through the back, um, and that's exactly what you want. If you want to go back over some of the um, basic layering um, tutorials um, that Leanne's done um, for Spectrum Noir, you'll have the same colour blend coming through. So there you go, so there's your BT range. Um, and there we go, so you've got your three going off then. So what we'll do is I will finish colouring up some more of these circles and it's a really, really quick and easy way. So when you've got a scrap bit of card, if you just punch out a circle, you can do your blend um, and have all your dark sides face in the same way. Um, and they look really, really, really zingy on black card. Um, and then using the alphabet, you can die cut a word and then pick up the colours um, using your lightest colour or so using your one or your two um, for the, each of the letters. Um, the BT1 is very, very pale so I'm going to add some BT2 um, just to the middle section and blend it out um, because it is very pale. You'll see that some of the colour ranges, but because this is like the ice blues, um, and there you go. So we've now got our S, um, and you'll have to look at the finished the finished card to see um, what my S is going to turn into for my sentiment going along the bottom. But the idea is that so I'll have the colours from the circles coming into blends at the bottom. So these circles are a great way. So what we've done is we've used our colour blending using the one, twos and threes um, with our Spectrum Noir markers and we've actually coloured a load of things today but using the exact same technique so just from the basic sets um, of the colour ranges um, that, are, that are on sale without having to buy the, big, the, big, the bigger packs just by buying your basic set um, of Spectrum Noirs, you'll be able to start making these really, really easy and elegant to make um, cast card effects. Um, and there was our bright zingy butterflies. Um, so it's really, really, really quick and easy. Um, and you can even, the one we didn't get to, I was going to try and do five, um, is start to do it on some flowers. So there we go. That's easy colour blending with our 1, 2s and 3s from Spectrum Noir. Check out um, spectrumnoir.com for more tutorials coming soon.